Breathtakingly beautiful it may be, but don't be fooled. Australia's outback is a harsh land full of extremes. Here the benchmark has been raised. The calibre of both man and machine is way above the ordinary, and it has to be, or the land will take too large a toll. Achieving the status of legend in these parts means overcoming immense adversity, being smarter than smart, of strong character and tough exterior. Winning the regard of an outback Australian is a hard-earned prize. Those who achieve this rarity are woven into yarns told around campfires and inextricably become part of the outback tradition. The Kenworth truck has earned this distinction. Kenworth introduced application engineering and were the first truck manufacturer to build trucks specifically to suit Australian conditions. Kenworth trucks are built to last no matter what and it's this tradition of excellence that maintains their dominance. Perth to Broome, up the west coast of Australia, a 2300 kilometre journey along the aptly named Great Northern Highway, which stretches from Western Australia's southern capital Perth, northward for 3,216 kilometres to Wyndham, in the top end of the Kimberley. Australian made, world's best, is tested here and not found wanting. The conditions are rugged and the climate demanding enough to cripple the strongest, man or machine. One big ship, one million acre station, three brothers, two transport companies, eight Kenworth trucks and a tricky river crossing. Join us as we find out what it takes to get feed and cattle to a live export ship due to dock in Broome in three days time.
passing over the super pit on final approach into Kalgoorlie, Western Australia. We're here to catch up with Doug Gould and his mates who are about to have a crack at breaking the record, the world's longest road train. Their aim is to pull 100 trailers over 1,600 metres or one mile on the old scale. These blokes are no strangers to the challenge either. They've broken this record once before, back in 2000 in fact, earning themselves a place in the Guinness Book of Records. Travel northwest of the dingo fence and terms like isolation and remote take on a whole new meaning. But it's the perfect place to demonstrate cattle haulage outback style. Especially when you mix in a couple of Kenworth road trains, knee deep bull dust roads, and a decent soaking from a tropical cyclone crossing the coast further north. These are the super quads that run on what's long been dubbed, among other things, Hell's Highway. Their trek starts in the industrial town of Port Headland, located roughly 1,700 kilometres north of Perth, and continues due northeast for over 400 kilometres to reach the rich manganese mine of Woody Woody. The Pilbara region of Western Australia is relentlessly harsh, intensely hot and intrinsically dry. Tim Gardner is manager of Slingshot Haulage's Special Alice Springs Rail Transfer Operation. It's a unique operation that involves some pretty special gear including purpose-built trailers. This operation really highlights what Kenworth mean when they use the phrase application engineered. The freight task basically involves the cartage of the railway line for the new Adelaide to Darwin Railway. A simple enough task when you say it like that, but let's just take a closer look. The rail comes in 27 metre lengths and weighs 1.375 tonnes per length. The total allowable length of a road train is 53.5 metres. So when you do the maths, 2 times 27 is 54. You've got to leave enough room for a prime mover, a dolly and swing clearance. It all added up to well over 53.5 metres. That is until Lee Dean, managing director of Slingshot Haulage, scribbled down the equation. Actually, he reckons he scribbled it down more than once. Probably took me a book of graph paper. We'd better turn the clock back 12 months and find out just what went into the design and manufacture of this unique road train concept. Oh, it would have been back in about the 40s that they, they were building a lot of this road up then, to just uh, forming it up with uh, earth. You drove into the gutters and things, and out the other side, down into them and up out of them again. Uh, just a track, you know, uh, just a buggy road, you know. Uh, coaches and that sort of thing, bullock wagons. And, oh, uh, there were a few cars about then, just coming in, you know, they'd been coming. Uh, 
into the bush for some years but not many people own them. It's a pretty good road now, isn't it? Hi, I'm Len Roberts, dealer principal for Brown and Hurley Townsville. We know Australia's Kenworth country, but if you want to go to the capital of Australia for Kenworth trucks, you come to Concurry. There's some 65 Kenworths living in Concurry with only a population of 2,500, so it certainly makes it the capital of Australia for Kenworth trucks. Sixty-five Kenworths. We've got to check that out. So now we're on our way to see why so many operators in Clone Curry choose Kenworth trucks. We want to discover just what makes a Kenworth last year after year in the torturous environment of northwest Queensland. To do it, we're going to have to get down, get dirty, and get tough. According to the directions we've been given, we should meet Jack Foster and his mate from Curly Cattle Transport somewhere out here as they head back to the Curry, as locals affectionately call their town. You've heard the saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Well, the going's been tough in Cloncurry since it was founded in 1866. So tough, the locals came up with a new saying. If you want to keep going, get a Kenworth. Malcolm reckons these cows know him, so they won't step out. The view through the windscreen looked about the same as that in the mirror. Rain, rain and more rain. This is probably one of the biggest jump ups, or hills if you prefer, on the run through to Mount Isa. Malcolm's got a few cogs to swap, so let's just enjoy the performance. <laughs> 